Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP FICO module where we were been and the profit center accounting part. In the last training session, we have completed the basic settings in the profit center accounting and in today's training session we will be we will be covering the master data and actual posting maintenance in the profit center accounting part so first moving up to the master data master data refers to those records based on which the various transactions take place it contains various data information details and controls by which the transaction has to behave. It is stored in the database for longer period of time. If you must have done the SAP FI module uh, while creating the GL master or the any of the other masters like uh, the customer master or vendor master or even asset master basically any of these master data or any other asset master or sorry master data in the SAP FI it contains all the basic informations related to that particular master data at the same time it controls the various and another informations related to the same master data and even uh, the the user ID and the time and date and when it has been created and how many times the master data has been changed as well so it's a very important part without master data you cannot work in the SAP system whether it could be an SAP FI module or CO or any other module for that matter so master data is very important now in profit center accounting in master data will be there will be three different master data which has to be created one is standard hierarchy another part is profit center and the third is profit center group now moving to the next is the how to maintain the standard hierarchy the standard hierarchy is a tree structure that contains all profit centers belonging to a controlling area and that reflects the organizational structure used in the profit center accounting a standard hierarchy in a simple terms can be termed as a profit center group prior to creating any profit centers within your controlling area you must first complete the standard hierarchy which is the central profit center hierarchy created in the system and it act as the one repository for all profit centers it can create additional or alternative hierarchies to meet additional planning or reporting requirements and for possible use in the allocation process but in a practical scenario they are used to only one standard hierarchy for a particular company code each time you create a profit center a hierarchy nod assignment is required on the master data that is why before moving on to create the profit center you need to have a standard hierarchy which will contain all the profit centers in it with the help of the nod assignment the requirement of an assignment thus assures you that all profit centers will be applied to one and only one nod within the hierarchy now there is one important thing which has to be taken care before moving on to create this standard hierarchy you can take it as a tip as a consulting part for this before beginning the development for creating the standard hierarchy and all spend time querying with the management about any upcoming changes to their organizational changes develop a, a hierarchy outline outline on a spreadsheet and seek sign off from the management this will save needless development time else there are number of times the changes comes up from the management so it is better to outline draft it and get it signed with the management which will give you a go ahead for creating the standard hierarchy in the SAP system you can develop a standard hierarchy like most of the master data 
is been done. Now moving on to how we can create a standard hierarchy into the system that we can move and we can have a look in the SAP system itself. So let's move on to the system. So we can move up with the path where the IMG then the controlling profit center accounting and master data is there. So let's move on to the SAP screen SPRO enter. We need to go to the reference IMG screen and then we can move on to the display IMG now and now we can move to the controlling. In controlling we need to go to profit center accounting and in profit center accounting now you can see there is master data and then profit center. So there is master data on the screen. We can expand this tab and then we can move to the profit center and again we can expand the profit center tab. So in this you can find the first option there is define a standard hierarchy. This is the options which we need to execute. So we can execute this over here. Execute it. Now you can see it asks you for the controlling area. So the controlling area is Z100. Enter. So as we entered you can see on the screen there is already a standard hierarchy defined. This is the standard hierarchy which we have defined while creating the settings in the basic setting part where we had defined the standard hierarchy as 1200 0, 0, if you remember. If you want we can move back to the same screen and we can have looked or else you can you can go back to the basic settings and in that you will find the very first configuration step where we have defined the standard hierarchy 1200. 0, 0. So once you define the standard hierarchy there the system automatically creates that as a hierarchy over here on the system. So moving on to now this there is 1200 0, 0, controlling area for 1200. 0, 0. You can see on the heading change standard hierarchy profit center group because the standard hierarchy is already created as you can see on the below part the standard hierarchy 1200 0, 0. for controlling area Z100 have already been created because this has been defined in the customization steps. So now in this particular screen if you want you can define different same level or lower level options on this. So any additions can be done on this particular part. So you can use these different tabs as same level lower levels for creating further options over here as a part of uh, levels. So suppose for example we can create few of them right now as on the screen just like I can go for a lower level and in lower level you can find there is a this is the standard hierarchy and this hierarchy contains these different levels. Even if you want you can create same levels as a hierarchy as well. So suppose I define over here as uh, the profit centers can be selected if there is any. So you can see there is nothing as of now. So the same has been taken up. You can change that and you can put it as uh, 1000 to this and then you can define the profit center over here. So the profit center could be suppose I give the profit center as product A. Similarly you can create more of similar like over here with similar option. Now 2000 I have taken up as a product B or even if you are taking the profit center as per plant wise in that case you can define this as a, a different plant like plant one and then you can take the second one as plan two and similarly if you want you can create further in that same level as 3000 as a third profit center hierarchy options like plan three. So this is how you can create these hierarchies and within these hierarchies you can assign different profit centers to it. So this is how you can create this standard hierarchy and now you can save this screen and your hierarchy will be created. So you can see the message the changes have been saved. So this is how you need to create your hierarchy in the SAP, in the profit center accounting part and we are done with the first configuration step of maintaining the standard hierarchy. Now moving on to the second part now is second configuration step in the master data is to create profit center group. 
Profit center can be grouped together to form a hierarchical structure based on the geography, functions, extra, etc. In this step, we will create profit center groups under the profit center hierarchy, standard hierarchy. So that is what the last step which we did was profit center group actually that 1000, 2000 and 3000, three different plans that has been created are actually the profit center groups. The standard hierarchy was 1200 which was which was uh, been created on the heading and the below to that the 1000 as a profit center group for plant 1 then 2000 for plant 2, 3000 for plant 3 relates to actually the profit center groups. So profit center groups are collections of profit centers with similar characteristics. So let's see this particular path now moving on to the SAP screen so you can see in the same profit center under the profit center accounting master data and in master data profit center and in profit center we can see below on that is define profit center groups so we can go and we can execute this step so as we execute we can even we can even explore the list of different groups created enter and you will find that this one two and this three, 1000, 2000, 3000 which has been created in the last configuration step while creating or maintaining the standard hierarchy were actually the profit center groups. This 1200 is actual the standard hierarchy but the 1000, 2000 and 3000 are actually the profit center groups. Let's revisit this again in the new screen. Okay, so after defining the profit center groups, however, this profit center group is an optional part. It is not necessary to create the groups, but uh, for the management perspective or for better understanding of different reporting perspective, we create these groups to, to make the grouping of the similar profit centers. So moving up to the next configuration step now is to create profit center. So, profit center basically is the organizational unit in accounting that reflects a management oriented structure of the organization for the purpose of internal control. This profit center master data is a very important part as different reports like financial statements income statements can be generated on the basis of different profit centers which will give further reports for better understanding of the company's internal operations in a better way to the management so it is why different at different levels the operations are divided into profit center levels it could be divided on the basis of plant for example suppose in a company or an organization have got different plants uh, in different locations so those plant can be named as a profit center and on the on the basis of profit center whatever the transactions take place of for that particular plant they are linked with a profit center of that particular plant itself and you can generate the financial statements for that particular plant so as to understand what are the different profits, revenues or expenses or maybe the assets and liabilities for that particular respective plant which gives the management a better understanding about the operations and the financial health, health of that particular plant. Similarly, the another one of the practical scenario can be that if the organization has operations in different locations and they have branches in different locations that can be named as a profit center as well. And in that case, if that has been named as a profit center, again, those reportings, those financial statements, trial balance, income statements, or even the sales report and the expenses report can be generated for that particular operation or for that particular branch, which gives the management a higher 
decision power or decision making power on the basis of those things because the system can give you those reports which will help the management to understand their their operations their business their uh, their particular branches in a more better way which are more profitable which are generating more revenues which are under profits and under losses and the management can decide and take decisions on the basis of that so moving on to profit center how these profit centers can be created so there is a path on the screen again to you for that sap easy access accounting controlling profit center accounting master data and then profit center and define profit center so this is the path with which we can move and we can create the profit center or even we can create with the img screen as you can see over here on the screen as well so both the options are there whichever options you want to take up with can be taken up this can be taken up over here as IMG as well or even it can be taken from the easy access options as well so you can see over here within the controlling profit center accounting master data and then profit center and in profit center there is an option of define profit center so we need to move and we need to execute this option over here and now you can find two options one is to create the profit center another step is to change the profit center so to create the profit center now we need to go to create profit center double click on the create profit center so once I double click it took me to the next screen and you can see now create profit center is the heading so now in this particular step first I need to define the profit center so I need to take the profit center code over here with which I want to create so for creating the profit center we need to take the profit center code over here the profit center code can be of 10 characters it could be alphanumeric so as how i can go for now for creating the profit center is like so we can do some working on the excel before creating the profit center as you remember i have created three different profit center groups one was for product one another was product 2 and the third was product 3 so the profit these are basically the group profit center group now within the groups these different products can have different profit centers or even this can be taken up as plant more better understanding so the plant can be taken as plant 1 plan 2 and then plan 3 and these three plan can have their different profit centers so suppose in one particular plan there are number of different products been manufactured in plan 2 the products which are manufactured are different from one and uh, there, are, there are multiple products which have been manufactured so over here we can the plant 1 can be taken up as a credential with starting as one so i can take one over here and then again i can put one zero 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 as a five digit then i can create another profit center with one two zero 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 one three zero 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 similarly i can take the other one but this is plan two so i will start this with the initials as two which will give me an idea that this refers to the plan two so it will be two one zero 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 then again the next one can start with 22000 next 323000 similarly we can move to the plan 3 which will start now with the initial as 3 the first initial the first number will will give an idea of the plant with which that profit center refers to and the next digit will give an idea of the product it is related to so similarly we can create 3300 so these different plan profit code has been taken now these profits uh, center codes can be assigned their different names for example the first one can be named as uh, um, suppose I take it as soap another one can be given as sample another one can be given as a oil category and over here on the second part it can be taken as like 
biscuits the next can be taken up as like chips or maybe for snacks and the third one can be taken as a separate like uh, mm, cakes now again the over here we can move to like cigarettes then cigars and the next one can be taken up as like uh, what we can take up as like is cigarette cigar and it could be taken as a different narcotic or different miscellaneous you can take it as so these are suppose different profit centers which I need to create now the plant one is the one which create these three different products plant two create these different products plant three create these different products so I can create these these different as a different profit center so we can move to the screen and now what we can do is we can first let's correct the profit center groups which we have created wrongly let's change it from product 1 to 3 to plant 1 to 3 so to go for the changes I need to go to the transaction KCH2 now in this I need to change it so it is already plant 1 to 3 so you can see over here now we will create the profit center on the second screen so the transaction code for the profit center is KE51 so KE51 enter so we'll be creating the first profit center as uh, per the axle that is 11000 for soap 11000 enter so this is the code which has been assigned over here now the next part is the analysis period so you need to assign the period over here from which period the profit center will be active and will be applicable now this particular profit center can be time based as well and you want that the profit center should be should become deactivated after a certain period of time in that case you can even define the time from and to option so I would be taking the period over here as like first of April 2014 then I can take the name so the name taken up over here is S O A P S soaps similarly I can take over here as well now over here you need to define the person responsible so the responsible person can be given a name as you wish ABC or maybe suppose I name it as Joe the department can be taken up over here like the department would be controlling moving to the next the group so this is where it is important now profit center group you can see so this particular profit center 11,000 for soap relates to the group plant one so that is what we need to select over here from this so you can see over here there are different plant one plant two plant three so the one can be taken up over here so this means that this particular profit center will be grouped in the profit center group 1000 and then if you want you can select the segment or else you can read blank moving to the next now is the indicators okay this uh, hierarchy is locked okay it's because the second screen is open so if the same screen will be open in another screen the same field will be open in that case the system will not allow you to move ahead so now we can take it up and enter so now moving to the next is indicators so in indicators if you want this particular profit center to lock you can click on to this lock so now moving to the next there is nothing to do in this nothing so this is what you need to do in that part that in the basic data you just need to fill these details as a basic data part that what will be the description what from when it will be the activated from and then the person responsible the user responsible can be assigned the department can be assigned to it and this particular profit center group has to be assigned 
So once the group has been assigned, now we can move in, we can save this screen. So as you save, you will find that a message has been generated. Profit center 11,000 save in inactive status. That means this particular profit center right now is inactive. You cannot use it. The system will not allow you to use this profit center until it is active. So we can click on to the continue part and now we can move up on the screen. On the top you can see over here that there is a torch over here small part. So this over here option you can see that activate. So to activate this particular profit center 11000 you need to go and you to click this particular option to activate the profit center. So you can move up to this and now click on to this. So once you click it will be activated. So you can see now the message has been generated. Profit Center 11000 has been created. Similarly you can move on to the next that is 12,000 for samples. Now we can move and we can create the second one. So you need to take this code over here which had to be created. Then we need to enter on the screen. Now you can see again the second one is 12000 again the date and then you can put the description over here sample and then you need to move over here downside as a person responsible and profit center group. These are the two mandatory parts as you can see these are tick marked which means a mandatory field. So again I can put the name over here as Joe and I can take the profit center group again from the screen from the list of the different groups. So again this particular profit center is starting with one with one the initial first character represents the plant so it is one that means it refers to the plant one and the second character that is two represents the profit center linkages with the product. So now we can move and we can save the screen again and again the message will be generated profit center 12000 saved in inactive status. And now we can move and we can activate this with the with the option over here. So we can click on to this and you can see the profit center 12000 has been created. Similarly you can move to the next like the biscuits in plan 2 can be created again. So if you move on to the second one like the plan 2 that is we'll start with 21000 enter you need to put the name as biscuits then you need to select the person responsible and then you need to select the profit center group now the it is starting with the initial as 2 on the screen that means it will be referring to the plan 2 so it will be taken the group will be taken as a plan 2 part that is 2000 and now we can move and we can activate it directly so once you click on to activate it will automatically get activated and will be saved so click on to activate and you can see now profit center 21000 has been activated. So this is how you would be creating the other profit centers on your screen. Similarly you can have another scenarios as well like you can segregate your your business of operations that is the reasons as a profit center as well. So as you wish you can have it and accordingly you will find your financial statements for the decision making part. So this is how we, where the profit center can be created into the system and this is how your master data has been done. So we are done with the master data part now. We'll be moving to the next configuration step that is actual postings. So moving to the actual postings maintenance, actual data is reflected in profit center accounting from the account assignment objects for both postings in financial accounting that is revenues or primary cost and allocations in cost accounting. There can be two ways for actual postings in profit center accounting. One is period accounting which is a simple solution and second is cost of sales accounting which is a complex solution. In addition to it, you can reflect changes in stock from material management module and changes to work in progress from production orders as well as revenues directly from sales and distribution 
in profit center accounting. Now moving on to further preparing profit center accounting to accept actual postings can be simple or complex depending on the needs of the company. On the simple side that is the period accounting all that is required is to activate the fiscal year control parameters. Create proper document types and define the necessary number ranges. On the complex side, additional account assignments has to be maintained and internal goods movement has to be defined and segregated to enhance the profitability picture for each profit centers. So moving into further for the period accounting, to have a discussion on the period accounting part, period accounting tracks profitability through the use of revenue and cost elements. The period, the principle behind period accounting states that all cost and revenues incurred within a given period, including sales, deductions, cost of sales, cost of production and all overhead expenses summed together net the total operating profit. As a delivery system, profit center accounting is set up to support the period accounting approach with the standard reports found in its information system. Whereas cost of sales account uses a different strategy, which is a complex solution. Cost of sales accounting also tracks revenue, but the revenue is compared to only the cost of sales associated with the quantity sold during the period. Manufacturing costs incurred in the period are held in inventory and not recognized until the time the inventory is sold. Additional selling and marketing and overhead expenses are also recognized in the period with the net result being profitability for that period. So these are the two different way outs for the actual postings in the profit center accounting. However, we will be moving to the simple steps that is the period accounting as a simple solution for better understanding as a beginner. So moving on to the first configuration step is define document types. Document types controls things like what currencies the posting can be maintained in, the document number range and the transaction must be balanced. To elaborate, by this time you have been exposed to the document principle and are familiar with what a document type does in SAP how a document type functions in the SAP system. So the document type basically let you know what are the different nature of transactions. The document type is one by which the all the different document number are linked with, are assigned with. So in the FI, the document type lets SAP know among other things which transactions are to be posted. Whereas in profit center accounting, the document type controls things like what currencies the posting can be maintained in, the document number range and whether the transaction must be balanced. So one thing which is not common in FI and in CO is that in FI, the currencies have nothing to do with the document type. Whereas in the controlling part, the currencies are also you taken up are also been maintained for posting. So it is through the document type configuration that FI posting are controlled even in the CO module. Moving up in the SAP system, let's see how this has been done in the SAP screen. So moving on to the SAP system, 
if you move on to you can find the path on the screen IMG controlling profits into accounting to cost actual postings then basic settings and then maintain document type so let's move with this screen and see how it can be so moving to the SPR screen then IMG screen to controlling in that we need to go to profit center accounting and then from profit center accounting to basic settings okay within the basic settings now we'd, we'd be expanding the controlling all right so moving to profit center accounting then actual postings and within actual postings you can see basic settings actual expand this and you will find maintain document type so this is the first config which we need to do and if we execute this step over here you will find that uh, the system displays you the default document type that is A0 which is a default document type setting in the SAP system by, by the SAP itself so you can use this delivered document type or you can create your own document type as well as with all SAP deliver objects we recommend that you create your own and to create your own what you can do is you can either go to new entries or you can go to select this and copy as well and you can define you can make the changes as per the requirement so let's move up with the new entries if I can click on to the new entry now you can see now the screen is blank so in the blank screen first of all you need to take the document type so the document type if you remember that is great so suppose I take it as SA is the one so you need to take the document type which is a two character ID then the next column is transaction currency that is TC now in this we need to activate the setting if you want the transaction currency is stored at the time of posting so you need to select this one and then the next one come up is the second currency so this is C2 refers to the second currency and C3 refers to the third currency so if you want the transaction currency to be stored for the second currency as well as for the third currency in that case you can select these C2 and C3 option as well now moving to the next is the balance check here you are offered the option of allowing unbalanced entries in profit center accounting so in this case you have got three options if you go and uh, click on to the function for key you will get the list of the different balance check so there are basically three options one is as you can see one is zero that is a error if posting is not zero so in this case an error is returned if the balance is not zero this will force all profit center accounting entries to be balanced if you go for one warning if the balance is not zero so if you wish to offer the flexibility of unbalanced entry then you can select the option 1 so in that case even if the entry is not balanced not equal to 0 the entry will get posted in the SAP system and the last one is 2 no balance check so no balance check means no check will be done and the entry whatever it may be whether it is balanced or not the system will post it without checking it at all so in this case we will be taking up zero that is what a standard practice is all about and once you have taken these options now we can click on enter and you can see now the things have been taken up so if you move on to the next part is local global and description so basically the lo local and the global these columns are grayed out the settings here represent the number range assignment given to each document type so this particular document type what number range will be assigned with this document type will get updated in this local and global columns of its own later on when the document type will be assigned with the number range 
and then moving up to the description you can have your own description to be maintained over here so it's up to you what description you want to maintain and you can maintain that description over here so now suppose I put the description over here as uh, direct posting actual so once you have maintained these things now you can go and you can save the screen and once you save it uh, your customization will be done for defining the document type so as you can see the request has been taken and it has been saved now so the customization has been done so once you have done this we can go back and we can see now that a new document type has been added over here as SA so this is how you would be doing the first configuration step now once we have done this now we'll move to the next configuration step and that is define profit center document number range when we post to profit center accounting the system creates profit center documents these documents are uniquely identified with a document number as in SAP FI part we used to see that every document is used to get posted with a unique document number similarly it will work over here for profit center documents as well so as noted earlier the document type is used as the number range assignment so in the previous step we we defined the document type now over here we will be defining the number range and after defining the number range the number range will be assigned with the document type so let's see how that can be done within the SAP system so the very next step over here are next to maintain document type is define number range for local documents so we need to go and have to execute this step so click on to the IMG so you can see now once I clicked it took you to the next screen as on on the screen now so you can see over here on the screen and to maintain the number range we need to go to groups so as to maintain group click on to the groups as you click on to the groups you will find number of different document types defined over here so one which we have defined right now is essay so these are the different number of groups already over here so now I need to define the number range for my new document type that is SA which I just have created in the last step so to define the number range for this I need to go to this particular row and I have to double click onto that so once I double click it will take you okay it asks you to select a group so as we double click onto this essay it asks you to select a group so for that we need to create a group so to create a group now we need to go to the option over here create so let's click on to create and it asks you for the company code so we'll assign the company code to it 1000 enter and now it take you to the next screen so over here you can name it the group whatever name you want to give it to so suppose I take it as SA document type group and you can assign the number range over here on the screen now so the number range will be the year will be the fiscal year that is 2015 and suppose I take the number range over here from 1 to this so you can have your own number ranges from and to as you wish to it could be from uh, starting from one it could be starting from any other number or any other series as well so it's up to you whatever you want to maintain over here on the screen so once this is done we can go and we can save this screen so once I save the screen there is an error message enter intervals without overlap so the intervals are basically overlapping so we need to go and have to check some other uh, intervals suppose I take the interval with the range of 8 so I take it as the interval from 8 5 times 0 to 8 0, 0, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, and net, net now saving the screen so once I save you can see now it took you to the next step and we can click on to continue and now the number range has been saved 
So you can see now the changes were saved. The message has been provided to you. So when you finished, save the settings and click the green arrow. So as we have did and the configuration is done. Now you have to take care of over here that be sure to extend the fiscal year associated with the number range interval far enough into the future. So the number range which you have assigned over here right now is applicable only for 2015 fiscal year. As you move to the next fiscal year, you have to you have to come back at this screen and you have to maintain the number range for fiscal year 2016 as well. Just like to add one for the next year, you need to go to this insert line at the header and you will find that the options will get opened up over here to you and you can maintain any other fiscal year number ranges as well. So that's what you need to take care of that. So that is what we have did and now so now what we did is we just created the group and we assigned the number range but till now we have not assigned the document type essay with that particular group. So to assign the document type to that group what you need to do is you need to put the cursor on the document type. Now let's see as you can see now I have put the cursor on the document type essay. So once you have put the cursor over here now you need to go to the option over here element group and that is that basically refers to assign element group. So as you click on to the element oblique group a new pop-up screen will be generated as you can see and in this you can find your group the group which we just have created so the group that we created right now was essay document type group if you remember you can go back and you can check the group which we have just created that is essay document type group so you can double click onto this and you can see now that the document type will be assigned to that so you can see now the Earlier it was non-assigned element. Now it has moved from non-assigned non elements to essay document type group. And the document type essay has been assigned to this particular group. So this is how you used to assign the, the group with the document type and the number range get assigned to the document type as well. So once this is done, you can save the screen now. So as we have done, changes have been saved that means the number range has been defined and the number range has been assigned with the document type essay as well. Now moving back and let's see the changes it will impact on the first configuration step that is maintain document type. So let's go back to the first step maintain document type and now you can see that in the essay document type part local document number range 04 has been assigned automatically. So what we have assigned there the document type with the group it automatically gets updated over here. This is the basically the, the linking or the relation between these. So this is what we have covered with. We have done with the with the maintaining the document type and then defining the document number ranges. Now moving to the next configuration step is maintain automatic account assignment of revenue elements. In this particular case step what you can do is you can assign different cost centers or different profit centers or business areas to the ledger account and that is why this is termed as automatic account assignment. So what we do in this case is we assign a particular GL, a particular cost center or a profit center and the system will always take that particular cost center or profit center for that particular ledger accounts. So while posting the transaction in SAP even you don't need maintain the profit center or the cost center for those GL accounts because it will be picked up automatically from the what has been assigned over here with this particular step. So let's see how this has been done. 
the configuration steps or the configuration path sorry has been there on the screen to you and let's see how this can be done so you can move with the with the path as you can see now profit center accounting actual posting and then maintain automatic account assignment so the same path you need to go to profit center accounting then we need to go to actual posting and now you can find this step maintain automatic account assignment of revenue elements so we need to go we need to execute this step over here as we have executed a new screen come up to you to you and you can see now over here that the company code is there on the first column the cost element is on the second column the cost element basically refers to the GL account GL number in FI and then you find the cost center the internal order profit center and then if you need the actual assigned details so what we do in this particular case is you the SAP provides you the option is that you can define default cost center or profit center to a particular cost element so in those cases that particular cost element uh, will be applicable only for that particular cost center or the particular profit center or the particular order number which has been assigned over here in this particular screen it will not work for any other cost centers if you if you assign any other cost center to that particular cost element or to a particular ledger account which has already been maintained over here on the screen the system will give you an error so this is what you do you you take the new entry over here and then you maintain the company code 1000 you take any of the cost element whichever you wish to and you want to maintain the particular cost uh, what you can say the particular GL so what we do is we take the cost element from over here let's see okay let me suppose you take the company code you took the cost element with the search options and then you can assign the cost center over here so this cost center assigning over here basically means that this cost element which is also the GL in FI will be applicable for this particular cost center only and if you want a particular profit center to be made applicable as well you can you can also have the profit center assigned over here so this is an additional account assignment tool in available in the profit center accounting only this assignment relates a cost revenue element posting to a single profit center so if you assign cost center over here or a profit center over here that basically means that that particular cost element will be booked or for that one particular single profit center so this is how you can do and once this has been done you can save the screen so similarly you can also go and assign the automatic cost center or the profit center to the particular cost element part so that is about this particular default account assignment config step now moving up to the next configuration step is choose additional balance sheet and profit and loss accounts now in addition as we have covered earlier the default account assignment screen just in the last step you have the choice of assigning additional cost elements or balance sheet accounts to a given profit center the balances for the payables and receivables assets and material stock will be default to the profit center that is assigned to the relative master record involved the master record can be master uh, material master for accounts payable or receivable and material stock balances or the fixed assets for the asset balances so let's see how it can be done 
and how you can assign your profit center balances to the balance it and profit and loss accounts in the SCP system. So the part is there on the screen to you, the same part, just uh, you need to go to the actual postings and then to choose the additional balance sheet and profit and loss account. So let's move on to the SAP screen, moving back. And now you can find the very next step over here is choose additional balance sheet and profit and loss account. Expand this step and now you can find the choose accounts. So we can execute this option choose accounts over here and as you execute you will find that the system will ask you for the controlling area. So you need to take your own controlling area if you don't know you can go and have a search of the control areas in the SAP system. So let's see. So the controlling area I would be taking is 1000 as been taken enter. So now you can see over here on the screen that there are no accounts been assigned as of now in the SCP system. So what you can do is you can assign the account from in two and those particular accounts can be assigned default profit centers as well. So that particular default profit center will be used for the default balance sheet and profit and loss accounts. So the settings are controlling area dependent. So be certain that the proper controlling area is set. So you have to take care that your correct controlling area is there in place. At the additional balance sheet and profit and loss account screen, what we need to do is we need to go to the new entries. So as to assign the new account with the default profit center. So you need to take the prof first the account number from and two. So to have the account number from and two, you need to go to the account number. You can go to F4 key so as to get the list of accounts. Let's take the company code 1000. And okay. So if you know, you can put the range as well. Suppose I take it from one. 4240090. So if you know the profit center from and to range, you can take that particular range and then you can define the default profit center. Suppose I take it as 1000. So this is what you need to do. You need to take the range of accounts you want to default to a profit center and then you need to select the default profit center which will be assigned to these accounts. And now once you click on to the save, the particular ledgers or the account group will be assigned to the default profit center. So that is all about this particular configuration steps for assigning the GL accounts with respect to the profit center to balance sheet and profit and loss accounts. Now moving up to the last configuration step that is allow balances to be carried forward. Now, in case you want the balances of profit center to be carried forward, that can be done with this configuration step. If you have maintained any setting on the additional balance sheet and profit and loss account assignment table, that is the one which we have just completed in the last step, so that's not a mandatory configuration to assign the account group to the balance sheet and profit and loss accounts. This is an optional configuration steps which uh, if you wish you can skip this particular step. So if you have maintained any setting on the additional balance sheet and profit and loss account assignment table, it is necessary to set the balance carry forward indicator for the profit center accounting environment. So to allow balances to be carried forward is applicable only when you have assigned the account range with default profit center to the balance sheet in profit and loss account. In that case only you need to carry forward the balances to the next fiscal year. So to carry forward the balances, the path is there on the screen to you. 
you need to go to the IMG then to controlling profit center accounting then basic settings balance carry forward and then allow balances to be carried forward so let's see how this can be done so moving up to the SPRO we need to go to the controlling profit center accounting and within profit center accounting balance basic settings and here you can find balance carry forward you can expand the options within balance carry forward and now you can find the option as allow balances to be carried forward so this particular step will work only when you have assigned the account range with default profit center to the balance sheet and profit and loss account so now executing this step so you can see now the screen it asks you for carry forward allowed carry forward not allowed so either of these two you need to decide whether you want to carry forward the balance or not if you want to carry forward the balances you need to select the first option that is carry forward allowed and then you need to go and execute this particular option the particular uh, execute button over there or you can you can click on to the uh, function 8 key from your keyboard so if you click on to this this particular functionality will do is it the balance carry forward allow indicator was set so once you execute with carry forward allowed the system will set the indicator for balance carry forward allowed for the accounts which have been assigned with default profit centers so this is the last configuration step and this concludes the section on actual posting configurations you have now completed the completed enough profit center accounting configuration to ensure that all transactional data flows will update properly and that all direct postings are possible within the system with respect to profit center accounting so that is all about this particular training session where we have covered all the different configuration steps and now we'll see you in the next conf next particular training session with then with that thank you